Thank you for joining us for this next segment, which is called Wild Clay, the story of North Carolina clay. As Dorothy might have said, we're not in Kansas anymore. We're not up at the North Carolina Pottery Center. We're down at Starworks in Star, North Carolina. Starworks is an art, artist and business incubator uh, down here in Star, North Carolina. And they do some really great stuff. And one of the things that we're going to talk about today is wild clay. We're also wanting to talk about Starworks Ceramics, uh, which is uh, one of the business ventures down here at Starworks. So what exactly is wild clay? Wild clay is, well, quite literally, a clay that you can just kind of go and dig out of the ground. You know, wild clay is a term that has come into use over the past several years, and uh, Many folks uh, here in North Carolina, many potters, were using wild clay before it became fashionable to call it wild clay. Uh, they go out, they dig their own clay, they refine it, take out the impurities, process it, and uh, even blend it. Now, you know, all that is very time-consuming and labor-intensive, and there were certainly a lot of potters that, as commercial clay processing facilities uh, came into being, started making use of them. However, we've got something kind of unique down here with Starworks Ceramics. Uh, now, as I mentioned earlier, we're not in Oz anymore, or we're not in Kansas anymore, but unlike Oz, which had a fake wizard, Starworks Ceramics has a true wizard, a clay wizard, Takaro Shibata. He started uh, Starworks Ceramics in around, uh, well, I guess it was 2009-ish, give or take a few years. He's now producing, I uh, believe, 13 different clay blends, which are all sourced from the local North Carolina clays. So this is great. Uh, it allows um, North Carolina potters who don't have to dig and process their own clay, but still want to use local materials, it gives them that opportunity and option. Now, this, uh, what you're looking at here, is part of an exhibition that started up at the North Carolina Pottery Center back in early 2016. That uh, exhibition is called Wild Clay, the Story of North Carolina Clay. After it wrapped up at the center, uh, we were happy uh, to uh, see it come down here to Starworks. Uh, Starworks was very gracious in helping us out with that uh, exhibit to begin with, uh, as was Takaro Shibata. So, uh, North Carolina and clay. Why is North Carolina you know, such a great place for clay? It all deals with the geology of North Carolina over time. Millions and millions of years ago, you know, the landscape and terrain of North Carolina was much different than it is today. The mountains were bigger. Uh, the Uaris, the Blue Ridge Mountains, much bigger. There was volcanic activity in the nearby areas, which was depositing ash deposits uh, as well. You also think about uh, how the state is broken up into the coastal uh, plain, the sand hills, the Piedmont, and the mountains. Over those you know, millennia, you see all these geological forces changing in North Carolina. Uh, you see the rising of the sea, the receding of the sea, these ash deposits, erosion from the mountains, you know, turning a, a stone over time into tiny, tiny particles. And, and all of this is coming together a lot of it is filtering down to the Piedmont area. And so you get these really great clays uh, which are developing. And um, you know, if you take a look at the coastal plains of North Carolina, you're not going to find as many uh, really good deposits there. It's when you get the Sand Hills area and then that transition area between the Sand Hills and the Piedmont area. The Seagrove region, uh, Randolph County, Moore, Montgomery, very rich in clay deposits. And those clay deposits can, can vary quite widely depending on exactly where they're located, what the clay minerals are in the uh, clay deposit, uh, what the soil uh, properties are in the area. 
can also depend on the organic matter that is in the clay as well to give it some of the different color. And uh, what we have here are a variety of different clays from around the state. Uh, a lot of them here are you know, really fairly locally. And these have been fired in their uh, non-processed state. And it really uh, shows you uh, the differences in those clays. You'll see some of the, these bricks are different sizes. And that's because of different shrinkage rates. You'll also see that some of them are not cracked at all, and others are fairly substantially cracked. So these are all uh, illustrating the properties of the various clays. Now, some wild clays you can pull right out of the ground and just take to the wheel and use with very minimal processing. However, most clays uh, will require some blending and uh, combining with other clays in order to achieve the various properties that you want to uh, want it to have. And clays need to have different properties because potters are trying to do different things with clays. Uh, for example, uh, a clay that is being used to wheel turn something uh, might uh, be a bit different in its composition than a clay that is used for sculpture. Uh, and it also depends on the uh, you know, personal appeal of the potters themselves. Some of them like a uh, clay that uh, has very fine particles. Some of them might like a clay that's a little bit groggier. It depends on what they are exactly they are trying to do with their clays and the end product that they're trying to achieve with their ceramics. So, wild clays. North Carolina has an abundance of wild clay. Uh, some of the potters, uh, a number of them across the state, still go out, mine their own clays, refine their own clays, process them, and use them. And many others uh, rely on someone like Takaro Shibata and Starbucks Ceramics to uh, source these local clay deposits and figure out the uh, ways to combine them to produce the best clay blends. So, I hope that helps you.